A child is locked in the basement by his alcoholic father who badly torments him every day. As the child experiences the cruelty of his father, he decides to devise an escape plan and leave the basement to live a free and happier life. Hi folks, I'm R and welcome to this tragic story. Send me your short movie and game suggestions on Twitter, which I can use for the upcoming videos. This video will contain spoilers. With that in mind, let's begin. The story begins at Haddonfield, Illinois, in spring of 1997. The child protagonist is grounded in the basement of his father's house, who has been drinking and wants to come down to give his child a lesson. Exploring the basement for some time, the child comes across some stuff which she refers to as his mother's stuff, suggesting that she has whether died or divorced the father and left the house. After some time, the child entertaining himself, the day comes to an end with night dawning, making the basement become pitch black. The child, terrified, tries to find some way to light the basement when he comes across a flashlight. After walking around some more, he hears strange noises coming from inside an unused old fridge. As he opens the fridge, massive cockroaches spring out, getting on the child, displaying the horrible, dirty and unsafe conditions of the basement. Nonetheless, the child has no other option to sleep on a dirty mattress with no pillows nor blankets. As the next day starts, with cockroaches infesting the basement and sharing the place with the child, lunchtime bell suddenly rings, notifying the child that it's food time. Through the dark door, the father passes a canned food inside a dog bowl to the child, treating him worse than a mistreated animal. The child, seemingly being left in the basement for so long, tries to catch one of the cockroaches to fill out the void and have a companion. The cockroach that he was trying to catch manages to escape with time slowly passing, leaving the child with no other option than to entertain himself yet again to keep his sanity. He sets up a ball throwing game, imagining that he's in a fun fair, something he misses seemingly since the incident with the mother. The child then hears sounds coming from outside, with kids playing while he's trapped in the basement. That's when suddenly the father comes down with a baseball bat and beats the child, something he will do quite frequently. Yet again in the next day, as the child accidentally makes some noise, the father comes down and punishes the child with a baseball bat, displaying what an abusive father he is, both physically and mentally. That's when the child, in a sad and resentful tone, says that his father hates him and that he also hates his father. The child passes out from pain and possible concussion, waking up at night while it's raining, not getting any medical treatment. He then sees his ball glowing bright, accompanying him and teaching him how to jump, a supernatural-like ability which allows him to jump very high. The ball tries to guide him somewhere when suddenly he gets jumped by a monstrous entity with glowing eyes, skipping the time forward when the child awakens from this dream. A dream that was infested with a monster, a monster that seemingly represented the father, the fear that the child has. Sometime later, the child observes the cockroach and quickly catches it, when instead of keeping it as a friend, he places it in his mouth and eats it, referring to it as something tasty, in contrast to the food that the father gives him, displaying how disgusting and possibly even expired the food that the father gives is. Maybe it's even dog food that the child eats. As time passes, with the child losing the concept of time, it's revealed that he even goes to toilet in the basement using a bucket, further displaying the cruelty of the father. The child then at some point finds the remote controller of the TV, using it to change the channel to an educational one, learning basic alphabet, showing how he's also neglected for his education. He then eventually finds some crayons and draws on the floor, which ultimately ends with the father yet again coming down and beating the child with a bat. As he wakes up from his concussion, he observes his crayons being put away on a shelf far away from his reach. As he tries to knock them down with his ball so he can continue with his drawing, the father yet again comes down and punishes him. Awakening again in a dreamy realm, he observes his crayons trying to communicate with him. That's when a monstrous entity yet again comes and ends the dream. 
As he awakens, he's able to move more heavier items, managing to dangerously climb and acquire his crayons to finish his drawings. His drawing reveals the tragic fate his mother suffered from. In fact, she was killed by the alcoholic father, ending up with the child being kept in the basement, making him very upset. Suddenly, a cat jumps down, damaging the kid's bouncy ball. When he gets angered, having the option to punish the cat, being referred to as getting grounded, the same words the father used to punish the child, or simply to forgive the cat. The child decides to forgive the cat, not being like his crazed father, showing compassion instead. Time passes on and it's lunchtime when the child gives the seemingly dog or cat food to the cat, whom he names Smelly, becoming friends together. After getting beat once more and experiencing another terrifying experience with more monstrous entities, the child learns a new skill, being able to climb on the ceiling like an insect. The child then plays pretend with a couple of dead rats the cat brought him, playing out the day that the father killed the mother. The child tones down the brutality of that day in his childish perspective. Nonetheless, the gravity of the situation, the abuse and trauma the mother endured before death speaks very loudly. Eventually, the kids playing outside throw a brick through the window with a horrible note telling the child off being a freak, not having a mother, and fully knowing that he's trapped inside the basement. And instead of helping him and notifying the authorities, they instead decide to simply bully him. Despite the outdoor kid's cruelty, the child finds Smelly being on the other side of the broken window, giving him the opportunity and the hope of escaping. That's when the father comes in yet again, chaining the child's neck like an animal to a furniture, not giving him much space to maneuver around. That's when Smelly starts crying for help, being somehow trapped in the vents. As the child pulls hard against the chain to get to the vents and set Smelly free, he loses consciousness due to his neck being constricted. The child then wakes up, being set loose, managing to throw acidic vomit at the vent cover, melting it and going up into the vents, with the spirit of the cat leading him somewhere. He then reaches a room full of monstrous entities, whom he defeats by throwing his acidic vomit at. The surreal vision then suddenly skips to Smelly, being chained to the furniture the child was chained to, being the representation of the child, when the child throws acidic vomit on the chain, setting Smelly free with both of them looking at the window of the basement and leaving. Finally, being free and getting out of this horrible house. That's when he suddenly awakens in real life, choking on the chain after he pulled it so hard, realizing it was all nothing but sweet dreaming. He's still trapped in the dark, damp basement. Strangely, he still has acquired the acidic spit ability, which he uses to go up the vent, noticing that Smelly died a tragic death, seemingly being starved or suffocated to death. <laughs> The child mourns loudly and in a heartbreaking manner, for his only companion also left him, being at last freed from this horrible world that they are living in. While mourning in pain, scratching the drawing of his cat, displaying that he's also gone, his father comes to punish him as seemingly he's annoyed by his cries, when all of a sudden the child outgrows his father, transforming into a monster and eventually scaring off his cowardly father after a big physical fight, who then subsequently goes up, preparing himself with a shotgun to defend himself with. Thank you. 
As the father is preparing with his gun to go down and kill his child, the child breaks the bars of the window and escapes, leaving all the horrible trauma he experienced behind, looking forward to a new life. It's only revealed by a newspaper article that in fact the child was a monster having characteristics of a bat or a vampire, being dubbed as the Bat Boy. As authorities dismiss these claims as conspiracy theories, in order to reassure the citizens, they are fully aware of the legitimacy of this creature, even finding his belongings with several cats on site, displaying his affection towards cats. After forming a strong bond with Smelly, who is now deceased. Therefore, the father in fact treated the child as such as he was a monstrous entity, being very dangerous and able to kill anyone with ease. The father seemingly wanted to safeguard the child, keeping him safe away from the humans. The bully's message makes sense calling the child a freak as he was extremely different than them. The dreams he had facing monsters and the supernatural abilities he gained along the way were all real and not part of his imagination. Nonetheless, the question remains if the father in fact killed the mother or whether it was the child, and if it was moral to abuse the child even though a monstrous entity as he displayed compassion and childlike behaviors and desires. In this ending, when the father decides to come down and take on the child with his shotgun, the child spits acid on the father, killing him instantly, telling him that he will never be touched again by him. The child then proceeds to leave the basement, going up through the unlocked door. The ending shown through a different headline in a newspaper article reads that a murderer is on loose who has killed three children and an adult with his son missing. All the victims are reported to have chemical burns by an unknown acid. The adult who died is presumably the father, with authorities believing the son is missing while he's the one who threw the acidic spits. Therefore, this ending indicates how unsafe the bad boy is to the society, with the father trapping him in the basement possibly being the right choice, as in fact, he is a murderous monster or maybe he threw the acidic spits on his bullies who tried obstructing him from escaping and even physically harassing him. According to the story, the bad boy in fact showed compassion and human-like characteristics, taking care of the cat and even playing as a normal child would, expressing his feelings of loss towards his mother's death. So the question remains, was it fair for the child to be trapped in the basement? Was it fair for him to be treated as such? By the society. And finally, in this ending, the father manages to kill the child with a newspaper article reporting how the father killed his own child and then subsequently killed himself, shaking the neighborhood due to this tragedy. The neighbors report that the father had been taking care of the child as he suffered from an uncommon condition, being a creature rather than human dubbed as the bad boy, something the father seemingly was hiding from everyone. The FBI becomes involved in this case, making it classified and carrying out investigations to find out what has been happening. It displays how at the end, the child in fact grew to a disproportionate size, overshadowing the father, which terrified the father to grab his gun and try to neutralize him. After killing the bad boy, he ends up taking his own life, which shows that in fact he cared about his child in his own twisted way, and killing him was something he couldn't live with. This ending also explains that the mother in fact disappeared under strange circumstances, unclear if the father actually killed the mother or not. There's some discrepancy, as the child clearly explains the father was abusive towards the mother and presumably killed her, while the article says her death was strange. So maybe it was the child that killed the mother, creating a different scenario in his own mind to move on, but based on what the story showed, the child, despite being a creature, was tormented by the father and severely abused. His mother also suffered the same fate and was eventually killed by her alcoholic husband. Unless the child transformed into his monstrous counterpart and not knowing what he's actually doing, killing the mother as the result, and completely forgetting that he was the culprit. <laughs> What a strange ending, something I did not expect at all. 
bad boy or real boy, he did actually suffer, and I can't help but to sympathize with him. Thanks for being here, folks. Uh, this brings us to the end of the video. It's been your host, R, and I will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.